Please tell me I didn't just let out the magic smoke. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Real quick before we get going, I've got to give a shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. Hey, welcome back guys. Jason, KM4ACK. So today's video is a little bit different because I really am left with more questions than I have answers to. And I'm hoping that you guys might be able to tell me where I went wrong if in fact uh, I did go wrong and I haven't already guessed correctly uh, the answer. So first, let me give you guys a bit of backstory. A couple of weeks back, I did a review on the two uh, 100 amp hour watt cycle batteries, and both of those tests looked good when uh, I was performing those. Now, my goal all along was to install those in the RV. I did some initial uh, measurements on those batteries and figured out that those two could definitely take place of that one WISE 100 amp hour battery that I was currently running. That WISE battery was uh, a lot bigger than these two new watt cycle batteries. So I was excited to get the RV uh, up to 200 amps of battery capacity. So after verifying that both batteries were going to fit in the existing RV box, I went ahead and charged those overnight to make sure that both of those were uh, at full charge before I did the install. My understanding is that when you're going to run batteries in parallel, you want them to be the same state of charge before you put those in parallel. The next day, I collected both of those batteries, gathered up uh, some other supplies that I knew I was going to need and my tools, and went ahead and began the replacement process. I ran the batteries in parallel, so that left me at the 12 volt mark, but added the two batteries together, so giving me a total of that 200 amp hours that I was looking for. Once I had everything connected together, I double checked making sure that all of my wiring was correct before I turned back on the battery switch. I had disconnected it while I was doing the battery swap just to make sure that I didn't get any arcing or anything like that that could possibly damage something inside the RV. Next, I went ahead and reprogrammed my Bluetooth shunt so that it would be uh, showing correctly with 200 amps of battery capacity instead of only 100 amp. After completing the reprogramming, that's when I went back inside and found the solar charge controller blinking. Now, I've known from uh, past experience, if I disconnect my batteries with the main disconnect switch, and I go inside, as long as I'm plugged up to commercial power, I'm going to get this blinking. As soon as I re-energize the batteries, everything goes back to normal, and I'm getting a readout like I should. So that uh, it wouldn't have been unexpected, except that I knew that I had already reconnected the batteries with that main disconnect switch. So knowing it was on, I was a little puzzled by why I was getting that blinking. Now it would be okay for a second and then it would stop uh, or start blinking. Then it would be okay for a couple of seconds. Then it would start blinking again. And it just kept repeating this cycle. So I'm sitting there scratching my head trying to figure out exactly what's going on. And I came up with my first theory. I had a theory that maybe the solar charge controller was putting out more voltage than what the batteries wanted, forcing the BMS on one or both of the batteries to disconnect temporarily. Once it reset, then I, uh, I would get the regular screen on that solar charge controller again until the BMS has decided that it was getting too much voltage. So I thought, well, that's easy enough. I should be able to reprogram the so solar charge controller. And once the sun goes down, I should be able to prove this theory because they'll no longer be, a, uh, be getting too much voltage. And that solar charge controller should settle down. So I waited until sunset and went out there and checked my solar charge controller. And sure enough, it was giving me just the regular readout and was not going into that blinking state 
uh, that was that would be showing an error. So I thought that I had figured out exactly what was going on, and I'd planned to come back the following day and reprogram that solar charge controller to be giving it a little bit less voltage going into the batteries. Now here's where the twist comes in, and I developed a new theory. You guys will have to tell me how wrong I am down in the comments below, but this is as good of a guess as I've got. The next day when I went out to look at reprogramming that solar charge controller, I wasn't having an issue anymore. So now I'm really confused uh, because I've got full sun on the panels. This was probably 10 or 11 o'clock uh, in the morning. It was wall-to-wall -wall sunshine with no cloud. So I knew I was getting the same voltage and roughly the same amperage as when I'd seen the problem the day before. So I'm sitting here once again scratching my head trying to figure out what's going on. And the only conclusion that I can come up with to this issue is that I didn't uh, put those batteries in parallel and leave them for a 24-hour period to kind of stabilize everything. So I'm wondering if maybe, even though I think I had both batteries at 100%, I'm wondering if there wasn't a slight difference in the charge level of those batteries. And until those things equalized and settled down, the BMSs may have been cutting on and off to protect the batteries. When they cut off, I would get the blinking light on my solar charge controller. And then when they would reset, uh, the solar charge controller would show normal. So that's as good of a guess as I've got. If you guys uh, know something different, please leave it down in the comments below. But now everything has been running good for about three weeks. I haven't seen that error again. So I'm really pleased with the way this, uh, with the way this finally came out but I am still a little puzzled as to exactly what was causing that initial issue. Anyway, we will be uh, leaving those batteries in place for about a year. I want to do a long-term test on those batteries. After a year, we're going to pull those back out and see if uh, both of those batteries will still pull full discharge capacity or at least fairly close to full discharge capacity. If you found today's information at least entertaining because it sure wasn't helpful, be sure to leave us a thumbs up down below. We will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.